Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Chapter 7, our new unit. is a continuation of the Chapter 6. Uh, uh, we're still working with the uh, trigonometry functions, uh, but uh, now in this new unit, we'll be looking into um, uh, more details of the, uh, the trig functions, all right? So 7.1 start with the equivalent uh, trig functions, uh, meaning that we're going to find uh, or, or look into the different ways that how we can write uh, the equivalent expressions for uh, any of the trick uh, expressions, okay? Um, if you recall, okay, um, the, um, the concept of the principal angles and the related acute angles, so uh, then you know that we can always use uh, the related acute angle to, uh, to work with our principal angle. So in a way that uh, the very first type of uh, equivalent expressions that can come from this is that uh, for any given principal angles, if we can just use the related acute angle, we can always find uh, the same ratio basically, okay? So uh, if you have your hand out with you, I want you to take a look at uh, the example number one. So example number one A, where we have a sine of a nine pints over eight. Uh, if you can quickly work this out from your calculator, okay, uh, I understand that not everybody uh, would be able to tell uh, what, how big is the, the angle nine pints over eight is going to be. Um, so, so in a way, we still need to use the um, the the degree conversions to so to make us um, um, realize like oh how big this angle is and and where this angle is happening in the uh, Cartesian plane. So if you work this out quickly, uh, you will see that okay, uh, sine nine points over eight is approximately equal to uh, two hundred and three degrees, okay, approximately, okay. So keeping that in mind, so um, an angle of a 203 degrees is going to um, have the terminal arms in quadrant 3 like this, okay? So that entire angle from the, uh, from the, uh, the standard positions here go all the way to quadrant 3. That angle is going to be the 9 pi over 8, and that is our principal angle. And uh, the reference triangle that we can draw on the quadrant three, and inside of this reference triangle, this angle here, the beta, is going to be our related acute angle, okay? Remember that I always use beta as our related acute angle, and that's why I want people to always make sure uh, in my work, I will always use that to represent the related acute angle, and so do you, all right? So to calculate the related acute angle, from the bow time method, we know that we're going to uh, have to take that entire angle, subtract the two, uh, subtract the pi, okay? Because from here to there is pi. But now because I'm going over a little bit to the pi, so that means I need to take this bigger angles, subtract the pi, and common denominator, so you get a pi over eight. So we know that this angle here is pi over eight. Okay, and the related acute angle is always less than 90 because this is just uh, is one of the angles within this triangle triangle, right? So, so this angle has to be uh, less than 90 degree. Okay, so using this, we can say sine of a 9 pi over 8 is also equivalent to a sine of a pi over 8. Okay, so this is the principal angle but this is the related acute angle. If you punch it in from your calculator, you will be getting the same ratio. However, however, because of the CAS rules, C-A-S-T, in quadrant three, only the tangent that is positive. So that means if you are taking the sine of this nine pi over eight here, then this, using the related acute angle, since the related acute angle is always positive, so that means you need to add a negative there in front. So that will be equivalent because if you punch it in, sine of a 9 pi over 8 from your calculator, you're going to get a negative ratio. But if you only punch in a sine of a pi over 8, and pi over 8 is 
all the angles in quadrant one and everything in quadrant one is positive. So the only difference between a sine prime over eight and a sine nine prime over eight is the negative sign. Okay, so uh, if I want to use the related acute angle to represent this principal angle, then I must including the negative there. Okay, so that is very, very important uh, uh, to make note of. Okay, so continue with the next example. Let me just do one more example. So 1B, uh, if you have a cosine of a 23 pi over 12, okay? A cos 23 pi over 12, how big is this angle? Well, if I, uh, uh, if I take a 23 times 180 divided by 12, you see that this is going to be approximately equal to 345 degree. Okay? So I don't need to write it, but I need to know where to draw these angles on the Cartesian plane. Okay? So this 345 will uh, be an angle that has a terminal arms in quadrant 4. So that whole thing here, that whole angle from the initial positions will be the 23 pi over 12. And by uh, getting yourself this reference triangle, the related acute angle beta is going to be equal to 2 pi minus the 23 pi over 12. Okay, so common denominator, so the 12 here give you a 24, 24 minus a 23 will give you a pi over 12. Okay, so... Uh, related acute angle is pi over 12, and so that means cosine of a 23 pi over 12 will be the same as a cosine of a pi over 12. But again, I need to look at the CA, the cast rules again, okay? And uh, well, in quadrant 4, uh, cosine is positive, okay? So that means if you punch in cosine of a 23 pi over 12, you'd be getting a positive uh, ratio. But when you punch in a cos cosine of a pi over 12, you also get a positive because the uh, any angle that is uh, uh, less than 90 will be in the quadrant one. So they are positive. They're always positive. So in this case, I don't need to add anything. I don't need to add a negative sign, but if this one is a sign, then I need to put in a negative here. But since this is our cosine, then they are equivalent, okay? But in our um, previous example, because sine is, is a negative in quadrant three, so that's why when I'm using the related IQ angle, I need to put in the negative there, okay? So that is uh, the first type of uh, equivalent expressions using the related IQ angle. Now, um, moving on, the second types of the uh, equi equivalent expressions is uh, using is what we call the cofunctions identities. Okay, so what is cofunctions identities? Um, um, in any of the given right angle triangle like this, okay, uh, we know that one of the angle must be the ninety. Okay, that's why this is called the right triangle because there is a 190 degrees angles there and the remaining two other angles theta or alpha uh, the sum of this two has to be the other 90 degree okay so let's label some of the the length here x y and r okay um, if I'm going to taking the sine of the theta, if this is my marked angle, then sine of the theta is going to be equal to opposite, so it's the y over the r, the hypotenuse, okay? However, if I'm going to look at this angle alpha here, in order for me to get the same y over r, then if I then I need to take the cosine of this alpha. If I'm taking the cosine of the alpha angle, then I also get a y over r. Okay, so that means when you're taking the sine theta, that sine theta is the same as the cos alpha. Okay, it's the cos of the other angle on this right angle triangle. Let's try one more example. Okay. So down here, 
is another example here. If I'm taking the cos of this angle theta, cos theta is equal to x over r, adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay? If I need to use the angle alpha up here, in order to get the x over r, I need to take the sine of the angle alpha because sine alpha is the opposite x over the r. So again, we know that the cos theta, cosine of this angle, is the same as the sine of the other angle. Okay? So this is uh, something that is what we call the cofunctions identities. Okay? Now think about, what about tangent then? If I'm taking the tangents of the theta of this angle, I'll be getting uh, y over x. Opposite over the adjacent. So what, what other uh, trig ratio do I need to take? But I have to use angle alpha, and that will also give me y over x. Well, think about it over here. So this is the angle that I must work with. Okay, but what ratio, what trick ratio do I need to take in order to get the same thing? y over uh, x. So adjacent over the opposite. So that has to be the reciprocal of it, okay? So that will also give you another uh, rule that uh, tangent theta is the same as the cotangents of alpha. Or the other way around, if I'm taking the tangents of alpha, then I, has to get, I, I have to get the cotangents of uh, theta, okay? So... Um, because of that, and, and you know that uh, the theta is equal, always equal to 90 degree minus the alpha because this is the difference between uh, the 90, uh, the sum of the theta plus the alpha always is equal to 90 because you already have another 90 degree here, okay? So keeping that in mind, solve for the theta, that means theta must be equal to 90 degree minus the alpha or... Uh, in the radian, that means it's a pine over 2 minus the alpha. Or the alpha will be the other way around, 90 degree minus the theta or a pine over 2 minus the theta. Okay? So think about that. Uh, if we move on and start working on example number 2a. If I have a sine 30, that means a sine 30 will be equivalent to a cosine of the 90 minus the 30, which is the 60. Because on a, on a right angle triangle with the 30, you know that one is 90, 30, the other one must be the 60, okay? And same thing here. If you have um, a cosine of uh, 23, so that means my equivalent using the cofunctions identities, and this one has to be equal to, well, let me use, sorry, uh, a sign, but this number has to be the difference between a 90 and the 23, which is a 67. Okay? And when you have a tangent of 53, so based on what we have, I have shown you earlier, then the equivalent has to be the cotangents, and the number will be the difference between a 90 and a 53, so which is a 37. Okay, very simple and straightforward because this co, uh, co-functions identities, we're only dealing with the right angle triangles. So when it comes to the radian measures, uh, a sine of uh, pi over 6, okay? So I know that the equivalent expressions must start with the cos, but the, uh, the radian measure here, it will be the 90 minus the pine over 6. So when you do take a common denominator, 6, then you will have a 3 pine 
minus a pi. So you will end it up with the two pints, okay? Two pints over six, but then you reduce it. So that will be uh, a pint over three. Okay? So you need to do um, simplify before you put down here, okay? So a cos of the three pints over eight, then the e equivalent expression has to be the sine, okay? But uh, when you take the, um, well, you can say here, you can say uh, this is a pine over 2 minus a 3 pines over 8. So when you take the common denominator, uh, so you get a 4 pine minus a 3 pine. So uh, finally, you should be getting a sine of a pine over 8. Okay, a pine over 8, because after you take a common denominator, this becomes a 4 pine minus 3 pine, give you a 1 pine over 8. Okay, and uh, lastly, uh, tangent 5 pines over 12. So the equivalent must be cotangents. And when you're taking the uh, pine over 2 minus the 5 pines over 12, then you know that you are getting a cotangent of, uh, so 6, 6 pi minus 5 pi is pi over 12. Okay? And uh, so in general, when you don't have any angle, so your angle is just theta, okay, like this, then uh, the general rule will be the sine theta, will be a cosine of a pine over 2, the 90 degree, minus that angle theta. So this is the general equations for sine theta, and the cos theta will be the sine, but is a pine over 2. It's always the pine over 2, because this is the 90. 90 minus that. Uh, and the tangent theta will be the cotangents of a pi over 2 minus the theta. Okay? Uh, if this is the alpha, then this would be uh, 90 minus the alpha. Okay? So vice versa. Uh, 